these are my two belt sanders you've probably seen in some of my other videos uh, I have a big problem with the sanding belts just laying around because I don't have any good place to put them uh, got them thrown just in everywhere place is kind of a mess anyway but all these sanding belts I can't never find one when I need it so I think I'm gonna make a sanding belt rack and uh, hang it on this wall right here beside the sanders. It'll be real handy to get one when I need it. I'm going to use a piece of uh, melamine that I had left over from when I built my CNC table. And that's the exact size that was left over, so I'm just going to use it as is. And I went and bought some PVC pipe and what I'll do is I'll cut the pipe to about the same length as what the belt is wide and uh, I'm going to mill some holes in this board, this melamine board and glue the PVC pipe pieces in that will stick out and hang sandy belts on it. So I'm going to go make a drawing and uh, create the g-code on the CAM program so we can mill the holes in that board there. Here's the drawing I made for the sanding belt rack. We're going to take this and uh, convert it to some G-code. This was drawn in Visual CAD and so we have to import it to Dolphin CAD, which is part of the CAM program that I got. This is where we create the contours for the CAM side of the program. Start off with uh, get the origin point and put it in the center of that first uh, cutout. These cutouts are going to be where the PVC tubing sticks out. Now we create contours for all the inside circles. Give them a depth of 3 8 Now we give create a contour for all the outside circles and we'll make them instead of group zero like the inside circles we'll make those group one and I'll explain why when we go to the milling side of the CAM program. And now we'll create a contour for these screw holes because my bit is a little bit smaller than the hole so we can use a contour. We'll make that group two. And I need to change that to depth to 0.78. back and redo this first one. And now a contour for the outside just so we'll have a something to go by. We're not going to actually cut that. And make that 
group three. Now we've got all the contours created. We go up here to machining and select milling module. Save that. We do save as. Like that too. I had an older version in there that I was playing around with, so I don't want to use that. Okay, now we're in the CAM side of the program where we create the tool pass for the G code. We'll change our clearance plane to just a quarter of an inch. And point one for feed change. Okay, now we load the tool file, which is a file I have of some tooling I've used called my tool file. And down here we select a tool. We're only going to use one for the whole thing, and that's an eighth inch end mill or a router bit. And we change the feed rate from what it came up as to 40 inches a minute, and the feed rate for the Z to 10 inches a minute, and select go around and so I want to start with this first inner circle to make sure I get the right one I'll highlight it and that's contour zero so it comes up like that and I want to go to the left side of it I don't need an approach or a runoff Options will be to machine all contours with the same group number. That's why we changed, made different group numbers. And Z axis, I'll make the maximum cut of 0.13. That'll make about three cuts. Click OK. And that creates the toolpath for all the inner circles. Now we'll do the same thing for the outer circle, which is contour 11. Now this one we want to go to the right so it will cut inside instead of on the outside. Same thing, no approach, no runoff. Again, machine all contours the same group number. Make the axis 0.13. That creates all the tool paths for the outer circle which will give us our slot for the PVC pipe to fit in. Now we'll create con or tool path for the bolt holes, which is that. Okay. We want that to be to the right on the inside. And again, we don't need approach. We don't need runoff. Machine all contours, same group number, and we'll do 0.13, even though we're going deeper, it will just do more cuts. Click OK, and that created the tool pass for the bolt holes, or screw holes. So now we could just say post-process and create G-code, but if we want to look at it, we can look at it in a 3D form and as a quick simulation of the toolpath. We can also, with this software, we can do simulation. Let's get an idea of what it's going to look like once we get it on the router. Click simulate.
Okay. Now it shows the piece a little smaller than what the actual piece is because we didn't do a contour for the outside of it, so it only allows a little bit of material around where we're actually cutting, so it looks smaller. There, it's cutting the inside circle, making three passes to go three eighths deep. It'll do that for all of them. Now it's going back and get the second outer circle to make the slot the correct size for the PVC pipe. Now it's making the holes for the screws. Okay, that's the simulation. So we can exit out of that. And it looked okay, so we select post process. Select okay. And there's our G-code. So the next step is to put the material on the CNC router and load the program and machine it. I just remembered I'm going to have to make a change to the CAM program the uh, eighth inch router bit I've got will not cut through three quarters it's only a half inch long so where I have the cam program set to drill the holes for the screws all the way through I'm gonna have to change that to just uh, go about three eighths and then once we're done on the router I can take a drill and just drill the rest of the way through. At least that will locate them. Sand belt rack. Two, I believe it is. Okay, so we'll do this one here, which is the last tool path double click that and it's showing seven eighths of an inch deep we'll just change that to three eighths and click OK and click post process again the g-code and hopefully that will take care of it not sure if I can tell by looking at the code or not let's see yeah the last uh, depth is 0.375 on the last operation so we're good on that so we're ready to go well we're ready to fasten down the piece of melamine to the table
fairly parallel to the tracks, two and sixteenth. Okay, we're all clamped down and ready to go. The only thing I have left to do is to mark the center of the first circle so I can line the route, center of the route a bit over, which is uh, one and three quarters in from the end, and three inches from the top. That'll be our center point for the first circle. So, we're ready to go.